This man is the origin of human civilization and has lived for 10,000 years to achieve immortality. He transferred his soul into the bodies of primitive humans, thus obtaining new bodies. He discovered that human bodies could be easily controlled and repaired to facilitate the transfer. He built pyramids on other planets, bringing humans over to become his slaves, and he regarded himself as R.A. in 800 BC, during the Neolithic era on Earth. In the deep night of the North African desert, the local natives were asleep when a mysterious light descended from the sky. The awakened people had never seen such a phenomenon and fled in terror. Only one boy curiously approached to check it out. It turned out to be a massive alien spaceship. A strong light shot out from the spaceship, and the boy disappeared. The time quickly moved to 1928. Archaeologists excavated a stone cover near the Egyptian pyramids. Next to the stone cover was a huge metal ring. The archaeological team deployed 800 workers to lift it, but no one knew what it was. But it was certain that humans at that time did not know how to smelt metal. Under the ring, they also discovered a fossil of a strange creature. The archaeologist's daughter also found a necklace there, clearly indicating that they did not belong to Earth. Time quickly passed to 1994, and the little girl who found the necklace, Catherine, had become an old woman with white hair. Her team had been dedicated to studying the secrets of the ring. They only knew that the ring's history was very ancient, possibly even predating the appearance of humans. Although the symbols engraved on it resembled ancient Egyptian script, no one could understand them, and the true meaning of the ring remained a mystery, until a man named Daniel appeared, with very unique insights into the history and script of ancient Egypt. He believed that the origin of ancient Egyptian civilization might not be on Earth, but rather influenced by external factors. This overly surreal idea was quickly ridiculed and questioned by traditional researchers, but this also caught the attention of the military. The project leader approached Daniel, expressing their willingness to give him a chance to prove his theory. So, at the invitation of the leader, Daniel arrived at the military's secret base, when he saw the huge stone cover in front of him. Daniel was completely captivated by those strange symbols. According to the researchers, this thing was at least 10,000 years old, which shocked Daniel profoundly. Because this predated the birth of Egyptian civilization, scholars had studied these texts for many years without any success. Daniel, however, had a clear line of thought, and his hypotheses matched their findings. So the military specially invited Daniel to decipher the truth. Using his knowledge of hieroglyphic translation techniques and his understanding of ancient Egyptian history, Daniel speculated on the content of the symbols and discovered that they had completely misunderstood them. He quickly corrected the experts' misinterpretations of the hieroglyphs on the stone cover on the blackboard. It turned out that it said, the eternal and supreme RA will forever seal the Stargate here. So, what was the Stargate? There were many strange symbols on the ring of the Stargate, and even Daniel couldn't immediately understand what they meant, until one night, he found inspiration from the star charts in a newspaper. He connected the constellations together and suddenly realized that these patterns were very similar to those symbols. At a high-level military meeting, General W.O. West had always been dismissive of Daniel's arrival. These people had studied for two years without results. How could Daniel possibly make new discoveries in just two weeks? But what Daniel said next left everyone stunned. The symbols on the outer ring of the stone cover were not words but a star map. There were seven coordinates on it, ultimately pointing to a passage that could traverse interstellar space. The seven coordinates could form a route. But he had only found six points on the stone cover and had not found the starting coordinate, so he could not determine the exact final position. Seeing that Daniel had successfully deciphered the use of the Stargate, General W.O. West was convinced and no longer held back. He immediately revealed higher-level secrets to him. As the steel door slowly opened, the secrets of the underground base were fully revealed. A huge metal ring stood in the center of the research room, also engraved with ancient symbols. This was the legendary Stargate. For two years, they had been searching for the final set of coordinates. If they gathered all seven, they could successfully open the Stargate and potentially reach a mysterious place in the universe. The secret behind the door would be revealed to the public. As Daniel watched the rotating ring, he had a sudden realization and quickly drew the symbol for the seventh coordinate, finally determining the seventh point. On this unique Stargate, neither made of metal nor stone, the staff hurriedly input the detailed coordinates into the computer. With a powerful energy output, the Stargate began to operate immediately. One by one, the coordinates were locked in, and everyone watched with anticipation. At this moment, security personnel sounded the red alert and evacuated all unrelated personnel. When the fifth coordinate was locked in, the ground began to shake uncontrollably, as if a mysterious force was preventing them from proceeding. When the sixth coordinate was locked in, a strange energy wave reverberated throughout the base. The intense vibrations caused the computers to malfunction. Once all seven coordinates were locked in, the Stargate began to spin rapidly. After finding the correct position, 
an unprecedented burst of energy was released, forming a water-like wormhole. The entrance seemed to establish a temporary wormhole with a stargate on another planet. This meant that the stargate could enable instantaneous travel across tens of thousands of light years. When the glowing stargate was opened, everyone was completely stunned to find out what was behind the stargate. The military first sent out a probe specially designed for space exploration. The robot passed through the stargate. But the data it sent back shocked everyone. They were amazed to find that the probe had crossed hundreds of millions of light years in a few seconds, reaching another planet in the universe. And then it quickly lost signal. The mysterious wormhole also disappeared. It turned out that General W.O. West, worried that the Stargate would attract advanced civilizations, had cut off contact with the probe. The final data from the probe confirmed his suspicions. By freezing and enlarging the images, they indeed discovered another Stargate. Moreover, the data showed that the atmosphere on the alien planet was similar to Earth's. To investigate further, Daniel volunteered to venture to the other side of the Stargate. Since someone volunteered, General W.O. West did not object and agreed that Colonel O'Neill would personally lead the team to escort Daniel. Before the departure, project leader Catherine found Daniel and gave him the necklace that was discovered during the excavation of the ruins, hoping it would keep him safe. All the soldiers were ready in front of the Stargate, but Daniel seemed relaxed, as if he were just taking a trip. After the mechanical cart first transported their supplies into the Stargate, O'Neill led the team and cautiously walked in first. Then, fully armed, they entered the Stargate one by one. The moment they passed through the Stargate, their bodies were disassembled into molecular states and then transmitted through the wormhole to another Stargate billions of light years away. The Stargate on the other side reassembled them back into their original forms. After a brief dizziness, the team successfully arrived on the alien planet. It was pitch black there, resembling a temple. Throughout the process, the team was very nervous, remaining vigilant and quickly running towards the light. Outside was an endless desert. As they walked further, they saw a huge pyramid behind them. Very magnificent. If it weren't for the three moons in the sky, they might have thought they were still on Earth. O'Neill collected some basic data and planned to take them back. But Daniel told everyone that there was no round stone cover here, and he couldn't find the seven coordinates needed to return to Earth. The team had no choice but to set up camp on the spot, to be safe. O'Neill quietly returned to the temple and placed a powerful nuclear bomb inside, while the others began to inventory their equipment. At this time, Daniel noticed a series of giant footprints on a nearby hillside. He followed the footprints and saw a strange animal grazing. The cow had a harness and a load, indicating that it had been domesticated by intelligent beings. Curious, Daniel fed it a piece of chocolate. Unexpectedly, O'Neill arrived with two soldiers, accidentally scaring the alien cow. The alien cow suddenly went berserk and ran and the rope happened to catch Daniel's foot. Daniel was dragged into the depths of the desert. Seeing this, O'Neill hurriedly led the two soldiers to chase after him. Fortunately, the ground was all soft sand. After being dragged for a few kilometers, Daniel only fainted. The alien cow then licked him awake. When the teammates quickly caught up, they were stunned by the scene in front of them, discovering something incredible. In the distance, there was a large mining site in the desert, with countless human-like alien natives digging frantically. Soon, the alien natives also noticed them, and everyone walked over with curiosity to take a closer look. Daniel walked up to greet them and ask for directions, but they couldn't understand him at all. At that moment, someone noticed the necklace around Daniel's neck and their expression suddenly changed drastically. They said something to the people behind them, and everyone fell to their knees as if worshipping a deity, not daring to look up. O'Neill walked up to Skyara, trying to show some goodwill, but the Skyara screamed and ran off like a frightened deer as if O'Neill was scarier than a beast. The soldiers were curious about the minerals they had collected. After a simple test, they discovered that these minerals were identical to the materials used to build the Stargate. Before long, Kasuf hurried over on an alien ox, showing great respect to them. Despite the language barrier, their body language suggested that the people seemed to regard them as honored guests. Kasuf was a smart man, with a wave of his hand. He dispatched several beautiful women to offer them delicious food. Daniel politely handed Kasuf a piece of chocolate to share. Although they couldn't understand each other, Kasuf continued using hand gestures to invite them to visit the tribe, to uncover the secrets of this alien planet. O'Neill and his team gladly accepted and followed the grand procession to the tribe. After crossing a few sand dunes, a magnificent city appeared before them. However, the construction techniques and styles were clearly very primitive, resembling ancient earth. With a hint of primitive simplicity, Daniel and the others arrived at the tribe, and Kasuf led everyone to kneel again. They finally understood why the people were bowing to them. It turned out that the pattern on Daniel's necklace and their totem both symbolized R.A. The natives mistakenly believed they were messengers of R.A., which is why they invited them here. Just then, the urgent sound of a horn echoed outside, 
and the natives could no longer care about the messengers, causing the tribe to descend into chaos. They scattered and fled, quickly closing the city gates. O'Neill immediately realized they might have been set up, so he grabbed his weapon and started firing, taking a few tribesmen as hostages. Kasuf hurriedly tried to explain, but their communication was completely off, unable to understand each other at all. Fortunately, the clever Skyara had a clear mind and knew to take O'Neill to the top of the city wall for a look. It turned out the panic was due to a sudden storm approaching from afar. So O'Neill ordered his men to release the hostages and sincerely apologized to Kasuf. It seemed that until the sandstorm ended, they would have to stay here for a while. The squad stationed at the base was also disrupted by the sandstorm, forcing them to abandon their main camp and quickly retreat into the pyramid. That evening, O'Neill and his team were warmly entertained by the tribe. Daniel took the opportunity to ask Kasuf about the local situation. However, before he could finish writing, Kasuf quickly erased it and then fearfully dispersed everyone. Daniel speculated that writing might be forbidden here. Later that night, Kasuf sent Shayuri to Daniel's room. Shayuri was quite straightforward, beginning to undress without a word. Fortunately, Daniel was modest and quickly stopped her. Despite Shayuri's delicate and enchanting appearance, Daniel managed to suppress his hormones and personally escorted her out. When she opened the curtain, she found Kasuf leading the natives, standing guard like sentinels at the door. Upon hearing Shayuri say that Daniel did not want her to stay the night, Kasuf immediately knelt, begging for Daniel's forgiveness. Seeing that he couldn't refuse Kasuf, Daniel reluctantly put his arm around Shayuri's shoulder and went back inside. But Daniel had no such intentions at the moment. He drew a pyramid on the ground, trying to convey his meaning. Surprisingly, Shayuri understood the significance of the drawing immediately and began to draw an ancient Egyptian pyramid with three moons on the reverse side. Daniel was instantly excited, since Shayuri knew this symbol. She must have seen such hieroglyphics somewhere. He then begged Shayuri to take him to see them. Meanwhile, the teammates hiding in the pyramid were in trouble. They felt intense vibrations as a gigantic spaceship suddenly appeared in the sky, slowly descending onto the pyramid. It turned out that these pyramids were actually landing platforms for alien spacecraft. Sensing danger, the team immediately began searching separately, but before they could react, they were defeated one by one by the aliens. Through the eyes of the team members, we saw that these aliens were wearing masks resembling the head of Anubis. Afterward, the aliens brought the captured team members to the main hall, where a coffin was slowly opened, revealing R.A. lying inside. At this moment, Shayuri led Daniel to their sanctuary, where the murals recorded the history of their tribe. Daniel explained to everyone the clues about the gods depicted on the walls. Millions of years ago, an alien from a distant planet fled his dying world in search of a way to extend his life, but his body began to decay and age. Even such a powerful being could not escape the fate of death. His race was also facing extinction. In his quest for immortality, he accidentally discovered primitive humans on Earth. This was a life form he had never encountered before. And gradually, he found a way to achieve eternal life. He realized that the human body was easy to repair and control. By transferring his soul into a human body, he could be reborn. Thus, he parasitized a primitive human and then claimed to be R.A., teaching human civilization and ruling over them. Later, R.A. created the Stargate, sending Earth people to this planet to mine minerals for energy. However, as civilization progressed, people on Earth began to resist the suppression. They buried the Stargate, preventing R.A. from returning to Earth through it. R.A. escaped to this planet with some people, continuing to mine the minerals they needed to prevent the humans here from rebelling again. R.A. forbade them from learning writing. He didn't want them to understand the truth. After learning this history, Daniel also found the coordinates for returning in the ancient ruins. Unfortunately, the seventh coordinate had been severely corroded and was illegible. The group felt disheartened again. This meant they had no way to return. With no other option, they decided to return to the temple to make further plans. However, from a distance, they saw an alien spaceship tightly covering the pyramid. Knowing this situation was dire, O'Neill quickly led his men inside to investigate, but the team members inside were already gone, and the place was a mess. Bullet casings were scattered everywhere, indicating that a fierce battle had taken place here not long ago. Soon, they also encountered an ambush by alien guards. Although they were a well-trained special forces unit, the alien guards used energy wave weapons. The team was no match for them. Within a few short rounds, most of them were dead or injured. Seeing the formidable alien forces, O'Neill hurriedly dragged Daniel to the underground Stargate entrance, intending to activate the nuclear bomb he had brought to destroy the Stargate completely. To his shock, he discovered that the secret weapon they had brought from Earth had disappeared. At that moment, a trapdoor above them suddenly opened. Several rings descended vertically, forming a teleportation device, accompanied by a blinding blue light. An alien guard in armor was transported down, seeing the strange bronze mask glowing with blue light. Even O'Neill trembled slightly in fear.
facing the enemy's high-tech weaponry. They had no choice but to surrender. With no thought of resistance, the two of them were immediately escorted to the top hall of the spaceship and brought before R.A. At this point, the pyramid changed shape again. As the dazzling sunlight streamed in, the inner door slowly opened. A figure in pharaonic attire emerged, and it was R.A., surrounded by a group of children. R.A. slowly ascended to his throne. Meanwhile, two guards brought out a weapon, leaving O'Neill stunned on the spot. It was the secret weapon he had brought from Earth, a powerful bomb capable of destroying the Stargate. With a wave of his hand, R.A. ordered his subordinates to remove their armor, revealing their true forms. It turned out that those who attacked them were also humans, and R.A. ceased his pretense, his mask continuously folded and retracted, revealing the face of the boy from 80 hundred years ago. It became clear that he was the sole alien ruling here. The guards below hurriedly knelt. Seeing this, O'Neill suddenly sprang into action, seizing a guard's weapon and easily taking down an enemy. However, in covering for him, Daniel was unfortunately struck down, lying on the ground. O'Neill then turned and aimed at the alien, intending to capture the leader first, but was stopped by a group of boys and girls. In this situation, O'Neill found himself unable to pull the trigger. They were then knocked out by the reacting guards and thrown into a water dungeon, imprisoned together with their teammates. When R.A. saw the necklace on Daniel, he vented his anger on the natives. He immediately dispatched two fighter jets to mercilessly bomb the enslaved human tribe. They had violated divine decree by secretly hosting outsiders. In a short time, the tribe suffered heavy casualties. However, the RA did not annihilate them completely, as he still needed them to mine minerals for him. Daniel, having brushed with death, awakened from the sarcophagus. Logically, his injuries had been severe far beyond the healing capabilities of human technology. It seemed that the sarcophagus had the power to repair the body, bringing people back to life. Daniel then wandered around and arrived at Ra's chamber. R.A. explained to him that he chose humans as hosts because their bodies were easy to repair. He also praised the rapid progress of Earthlings, noting their mastery of atomic energy. R.A. claimed that he created human civilization 10,000 years ago, but humanity betrayed him. Now, they dared to come here with a nuclear bomb. So he planned to personally destroy humanity. R.A. had added special minerals to the nuclear bomb brought by O'Neill, increasing its power by hundreds of times. With Earth's Stargate reopened, he intended to send the bomb back to Earth as punishment for humanity's unauthorized use of the Stargate. But before that, to prevent the slaves on this planet from doubting his authority, he forced Daniel to kill O'Neill and his team. This would prove to all slaves that he was the only god on this planet, or else he would kill Daniel and everyone who had contact with him. What R.A. did not know was that the seeds of freedom had already sprouted in the slaves' hearts. Before this, Daniel had instructed Shayuri to reveal Ra's dark plot to the tribe. He told them that to gain freedom, they must unite and rebel against R.A. Unaware, R.A. immediately gathered everyone in front of the pyramid for the public execution of O'Neill and his team, forcing Daniel to do it himself. Daniel took the alien weapon and slowly walked toward his team. At that moment, someone in the crowd signaled to Daniel, revealing they had secured the weapons brought by O'Neill. Daniel instantly understood that the tribe had a rebellious spirit and immediately turned to attack the enemy. Catching them off guard, hidden rebels joined the battle, and chaos erupted. O'Neill and his team seized the opportunity to blend into the crowd and escape. The guards started indiscriminately attacking the crowd in their frenzy, and facing the high-tech weapons. The people fled in panic. Luckily, a sandstorm arose, providing cover, and they successfully escaped to a cave, though their initial battle ended in retreat. They were not discouraged. This time, they were fighting for their own freedom. However, O'Neill remained worried, as the secret weapon was still in Ra's possession, threatening humanity's future. Determined to stop R.A., O'Neill and the group discussed their counterattack plans. Skyara drew a symbol on the wall to commemorate the special day. When Daniel saw it, he realized it was the coordinate for the seventh Stargate symbol they had been searching for. Now they had a way back, allowing them to stop R.A. without hesitation. The next day, they disguised themselves and joined the natives in delivering minerals to R.A. They seized the opportunity to strike, taking down a guard. The natives were initially terrified, kneeling in fear. But when Daniel removed the guard's helmet, they saw that the so-called gods were actually humans. R.A. had brainwashed the slaves to create these soldiers. The group then disguised themselves as miners and successfully deceived the guards, entering the pyramid. However, they were soon discovered, and O'Neill delivered a direct blow to the enemy. A fierce battle ensued. Outside, the tribe members and soldiers were about to storm the pyramid when the enemies maliciously closed the pyramid's entrance, blocking the bulk of the reinforcements. Then, they deployed two fighter jets to attack the slaves on the ground. Despite the terrifying power of the jets, there were only two of them, while humans had a significant numerical advantage. And O'Neill and his team also found the nuclear bomb at the Stargate. O'Neill, full of confidence, 
activated the bomb. With seven minutes left on the countdown, he told Daniel and the others to leave quickly, while he stayed behind to blow up the Stargate and eliminate any future threat. In fact, O'Neill had lost the will to return to Earth after his son's accidental death. Unexpectedly, at this moment, a guard suddenly appeared and attacked Shayuri. Although Daniel shot and killed the guard, Shayuri showed no signs of life. Daniel, who had just tasted the sweetness of love, was unwilling to give up. At that moment, the teleportation device above him activated. Daniel remembered that the alien sarcophagus could easily repair the body. He immediately carried Shayuri and quickly entered the teleportation channel. The two disappeared into thin air with a flash of light. However, just as Daniel left, Anubis was teleported over, catching O'Neill off guard. After a few rounds, Anubis clearly proved to be stronger than O'Neill, repeatedly knocking him down. Daniel, carrying Shayuri's body, rushed into the room, placed her in Ra's sarcophagus, and looked on in anticipation of another miracle. After a long while, Shayuri's body was repaired by the machine and was about to wake up. Daniel quickly picked her up and prepared to leave using the teleportation lift, but was unexpectedly discovered by R.A. R.A. pressed Daniel's head with his hand, attempting to destroy his soul. In a moment of desperation, O'Neill below fights his way through Anubis and triggers the teleportation array on Anubis' wrist. The heavy teleportation ring cut the captain in half, and the teleportation channel was reopened. Daniel seized the opportunity to take the pendant from Ra's neck then successfully used the teleportation array to escape with Shayuri. O'Neill intended to turn off the bomb timer but was horrified to find that the bomb had been tampered with by R.A. and could no longer be stopped. Tribal leader Kasuf also led the people in an uprising, starting a war to liberate the slaves. The guards around the pyramid quickly fell. Seeing that the situation was hopeless, R.A. activated his spaceship to flee the planet. At this time, Shayuri finally woke up. O'Neill and Daniel looked towards the sound and saw the teleportation switch in Anubis's hand, with the countdown nearing its end. Daniel and O'Neill had a sudden inspiration. At this moment, R.A. had already escaped into outer space, but the Stargate suddenly opened, and they immediately sent the bomb through the Stargate onto the alien spaceship. As the countdown ended, a violent explosion occurred. R.A., unable to hide, revealed his true form and was blown to cosmic dust along with the alien spaceship. The slaves on the planet finally regained their freedom and cheered. Afterward, Daniel reactivated the Stargate, sending O'Neill and the others back to Earth. He chose to stay here, to teach the people of this planet Earth's civilization and technology. More importantly, there was someone here he couldn't leave behind. The movie ends here. I'm Movie Lover. Welcome to subscribe to my channel. And see you next time.